Welcome back to Explaining Everything, the channel where we dive into the stories and mysteries behind everyday things. Today's question comes from one of our curious viewers, Retro Randy 97 Thanks for the suggestion, Randy. You asked, what happened to projection TVs? If you grew up any time before flat screens took over the planet, you probably remember these gigantic, lumbering beasts sitting in living rooms like they were part of the load-bearing structure. They were huge, they were dramatic, they hummed like a tired refrigerator, and somehow the picture always looked like it needed glasses. So stay tuned as we break down the rise and fall of projection TVs, right here on Explaining Everything. Before flat screens existed, humanity wanted one thing, a really big TV that didn't weigh as much as a baby elephant. In the late 1970s and 1980s, projection TVs stepped up like, hey, what if we take a tiny image and blast it onto a giant screen? And somehow, everyone collectively decided, yeah, that's science, put it in my house. Rear projection TVs, the ones people actually bought, used lenses and mirrors inside a massive cabinet to make the picture bigger. Imagine a funhouse mirror. But all the fun was replaced with constant color calibration. These things were huge, often four to five feet tall and deep enough to hide small pets or children behind them. But back then... Having one made you the king of movie night. Even though the picture sometimes looked washed out, dim, or like someone smeared Vaseline on the screen, people didn't care. Big screen over everything else. Plus, movies in the 90s just felt cooler on something that took up half your living room. Sure, you had to sit almost directly in front of it to see anything because if you moved even a little to the side, the picture turned into a shadowy blob. But that was just part of the projection TV experience. Projection TVs came in three main flavors, CRT, LCD, and DLP. Saying flavors is generous. They were more like the three moods of someone desperately trying to stay awake. CRT projection had three giant light guns, red, green, and blue, blasting onto a screen. The issue? They constantly needed alignment. If the beams drifted even slightly, your movie night turned into a 3D experience you didn't ask for. LCD projection got rid of the light guns and used panels instead, which solved some problems and created new ones like burn-in and colors that sometimes looked like they came from a 32-pack of crayons instead of the 64-pack. DLP projection, using tiny mirrors bouncing light around, was the most advanced. It even produced decent contrast for the time. But then came the rainbow effect, a delightful bonus feature where fast movement made the screen flash like a disco party. Some people didn't notice it. Others noticed it so hard they got headaches. But regardless of which one you had, the main killing blow was always the same. Brightness. Projection TVs were allergic to daylight. Open a single window and suddenly you're watching a documentary called The Shadowy Shapes I Think Are My Favorite Characters. And because brightness was limited, picture quality always looked like almost HD, but not quite, like it accidentally left its glasses at home. The early 2000s changed everything. Plasma showed up like, hey, what if we made the screen flat, bright, and actually pleasant to look at? And LCD TVs followed right behind at cheaper prices, lower power usage, and sizes that eventually matched or surpassed projection TVs without needing a forklift to move them. Flat screens had 
better brightness, better colors, better viewing angles, better sharpness, less maintenance, and most importantly, they didn't look like furniture from a cursed warehouse. The industry didn't even hesitate. Manufacturers saw flat screens and immediately threw projection TVs out the nearest window. By around 2008 to 2010, almost every major company stopped producing them entirely. Toshiba, Sony, Mitsubishi, all gone. Mitsubishi held out the longest, only stopping DLP production in 2012, which in tech years is like staying at a party two days after everyone else left. Once flat screens became affordable and kept getting bigger every year, projection TVs became the VHS tapes of the TV world. Nostalgic, but only because we don't have to use them anymore. Projection TVs didn't just lose. They got obliterated by the speed of modern TV evolution. Flat screens kept getting thinner, brighter, cheaper, sharper, and sometimes curved, even though nobody asked for that. Meanwhile, projection TVs stayed bulky, dim, and required the kind of maintenance that felt like owning an old car. Bulbs burned out, colors drifted, dust got inside, and every time you touched the cabinet, even slightly, the picture shifted like a nervous chameleon. By the mid-2010s, nobody wanted to deal with any of that. And today, a 75-inch 4K TV costs less than a projection TV bulb used to. That was it, the final nail. Now, most projection TVs live in garages, basements, or landfill documentaries. They had a good run, but time caught up fast. Projection TVs were a hilarious stepping stone between old-school square TVs and the sleek screens we have today. They didn't disappear because people stopped wanting big screens. They disappeared because flat screens did everything better without needing a cabinet the size of a small shed. So next time you complain about a smudge on your 4K OLED, remember, we used to watch movies on giant dim boxes that needed constant alignment, annual bulb sacrifices, and total darkness to function. And we loved them anyway. If you enjoyed this trip down memory lane, don't forget to like, subscribe, and to those who still have them, happy movie night. Also, if you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for tuning in and join us next time here in the channel that answers all the why, what, who, where, and how questions you've always wondered about here on Explaining Everything.